So at a, a high level, when you load a web page, there's a bunch of different files that get loaded. There's obviously the HTML page, there's a bunch of images, there's fonts, there's CSS files and JavaScript files that have some code in them. And these could be coming from any number of places. So a lot of that content is coming from your site. You're serving up that HTML page, a lot of those images, but you're also bringing in code from lots of other places. If you're using Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics, well, that's code that's coming from a, a Google domain that is being used on your site. If you're embedding, uh, I don't know, a, 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 a Vimeo video or a YouTube video, well, that's code coming from YouTube or Vimeo that is, is being uh, kind of displayed on your site. And the, the risk there is that you don't have full control over what's happening on those other sites. So if Vimeo gets hacked and you have Vimeo videos that are displayed on your site, well, someone could insert code over on the Vimeo side that makes a call out to evilhacker.com or something like that when someone's trying to play a video on your site. And so what a content security policy does is it lets you explicitly say who a, an end user and their web browser should trust when they're on your site. And so when someone comes to your site, you can say, all right, we'll allow fonts from Google fonts and we'll allow code that's coming from Google tag manager.com or Google analytics.com or, or whatever. But then anything that you haven't explicitly allowed is, is banned by default and browsers won't run. So if there is some sort of uh, breach you know, somewhere, somewhere in that chain and someone is, is able to inject code that makes a call out to some other third party site, it won't run for, for the users who come to your site. And that's a, a really powerful security tool to have to be able to really filter out anything that you haven't explicitly approved.